Hey, this is Harold with HaroldNixon.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to export audio files. Uh, let's say maybe you want to send the tracks back to your buddy after you've already cut on his project. You're going to mail them back or email them back. And you want to give him uh, two different options, or maybe three different options, three different takes he can choose from. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to be opening uh, the project we'd worked on earlier. These are some things uh, I'd, I'd showed how to import on an earlier tutorial. So uh, first, to get started, you can see we've got our, uh, our punches, our overdubs here on these two tracks. These are two acoustic guitar tracks. Uh, these are actually the same uh, uh, guitar take, but uh, we recorded in stereo, hence we have two tracks, two mics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, choose the lane thing here and change the uh, lanes to fixed. And you can see where we, in our earlier tutorial, we learned about uh, uh, these different lanes here. So I'm going to open that up on both of these. And um, on this first take, uh, you can see I've got these two muted out, these, uh, these last uh, two overdub sections. So I want to say this, I want to send him as this as uh, one take, okay? So uh, for an education here, I will set these inaccurately to show you what happens. So we would have this, we've listened to it, and we think this is one take we want to uh, send to him. So what we're going to do is first thing we want to check is make sure our mixer is zeroed on those channels that we're wanting to export. So we're going to open up the mixer here and we're on channel 2 here and channel 3. So we'll look on the mixer here and we're at channel 2 and channel 3 and we can see that we're set at utility on both channels. Uh, no pan because the C denotes that we're in center. Now if we had had the volume changed you can see that there's the numbers change and if we had been panned you know different uh, values there we would want to set these back to zero. Now the easiest way to do this is just to hold down the control key and click it. So I'm going to hit control, click, and it zeroes it. Same with the pan. We can hit control, click, and it centers it. We can do that on our other channel too. So control, click, bam. Center uh, sets it to utility or zero. Same with the pan, control, click. Okay, now if we had any EQs here, they would be lit up, but we don't We don't want any sins or any EQs. We wouldn't want to buy, bypass these or turn these off um, before we export them, uh, unless that was the desired effect. If you wanted to send uh, uh, stuff that w had already some verbs or EQ on it, but most people prefer it just dry so they can mix it to their taste. One other thing you want to make sure is that your master is like that, because uh, you know sometimes while we're tracking, we'll just bump the master up, and we won't even notice it, or we'll put a little EQ on it, or, and we forget all about that. But we want to make sure our master is also zeroed, because that will dictate as well. So now that we've got all that stuff set, I'm going to go ahead and close the mixer. I want to solo the channel I'm going to be doing. So this will be our first version, if you will, and this will be our left mic. So I'm going to solo it. I'm going to go to Audio, Export, Audio mix down. Uh oh, we forgot to set our left and right locators. Now, in order to mix down something, we have to have those set. Now, these are the things that I messed up intentionally a minute ago. It's a little triangle up here. We can click and drag these, and you'll see the blue here. Now, whatever's in this blue, you see, we can see everything from here over to the left would be rendered because it's in the blue. Uh, now, if we invert these, you'll see it turns red that won't render. That's not that's not proper because the the left uh, marker is set further to the right than the right marker is. So we have to make sure we've got these set. So we set it at uh, normally what I'll do is I'll set it all the way to the left of the project so that or wherever the beginning of the audio files are so that whoever imports these back have a zero reference uh, in case some sort of timestamp is lost. You can literally just pop it in, pull it all the way to the left and everything's synced up. So uh, I'll go ahead and uh, set these markers. Now, one other thing I want to tell you real quick. You can literally drag these around with your mouse, or you can use the keyboard shortcuts. So, let's say I wanted the left marker to be set there. I can hold the control key down, and then hit the number one on the new, uh, number pad, and that sets it there. Same with the number two here. Uh, if I wanted to set the right marker, I can hit control, and then the two key sets it. So one is left, two is right. Uh, now, somewhat off topic here, but since I'm talking about it, this is a good way to set uh, locators. So if, if I was listening to the same section over and over and I wanted to keep going back to this section, I can hit control and then 3 through 9 will set any locator points I want. 
So I'm going to just set this as number 5. So I'm going to hit Control 5. Now that's set. So let's play this. Okay, now let's say that I want to just, I've been editing this, and I want to go back and I want to hear that same section again. So now all I have to hit the key is the number 5 key. No control, because control is what sets it. But to listen again, just hit the 5 key. And see, it takes us back to that same spot. Now you can do this as many times as you want, uh, as 3 through 9. Uh, for easy shortcuts, and you can actually set more within Cubase, but those are the key uh, key uh, command ones. So, okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is just set these to the left of the song and to the right of the song because this is file is going to be rendered all the way through. So, okay, I've got it soloed. My board is uh, zeroed. So now I'm going to really export this time since we have them set. So audio mix down. Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll name the file. So this would be uh, guitar left um, take. Or whoops. Uh, I'll just uh, say version one. I'll say V1. So this would be our left mic version one. Okay, that's what the file name we would choose, and we want to choose a path to set it to. So you could put it in the same uh, uh, directory as your song, or if you wanted to uh, choose another one, we could. So you can put this anywhere you want to. So I'm going to say choose, and I'm going to put it in my documents, and I'm going to make a new folder. This this little icon here creates a new folder. And so it's going to be under my documents, and we get to name the folder. So I'll just type in um, guitar tracks, okay? And I'll double-click this, and you can see our... Guitar Left version 1 is named, and we'll just go ahead and hit Save. You can see that puts that there. Uh, now, we, uh, if we want it to be WAV, which mo most people do, you can, you can choose your file format here, but we're going to choose WAV file because that's what we want. Um, we want uh, this to be rendering down on the uh, stereo output since that's where we've got all of our stuff set to. Uh, we want this to be a mono export because this is only one channel. So I want this to be mono. And then we would choose our sample rates here, whatever our desired sample rate was. And we can choose whether we want it to be real-time export or not. Uh, for this, I don't want to see it. I want it to be as fast as it can be done. And here's other options that are self-explanatory. Uh, it imports back to the pool or actually back into an audio track within Cubase. And this one closes the dialog after the export. I like to keep it open because I may be doing uh, uh, multiple versions of something. So. Anywho, that looks like that one's good, so let's go ahead and export it. This will be just exporting the left guitar version 1. So, we can see that exporting. While we're here, our next thing we're going to do is we're going to do guitar left version 2. So we'll have to do a little editing on our track. And then after that, we'll move to the right microphone. As always, I want to take the time to remind you to visit haroldnixon.com where I've got some other tutorials and some uh, audio products uh, to kind of help support me. So if you enjoy these tutorials, go there, and uh, hopefully before long I'll have these tutorials for sale on a, uh, a full C uh, DVD that you'll be able to uh, buy for a small fee. But I've also got uh, recording computers and different audio interfaces. But um, Okay, so that exported. So now what I want to do is I'm going to close this. Now I want the version uh, 2 take. So what I want to do is I want these in here. So I want to choose my mute tool and unmute these. So this is going to give us a different version that we'd already listened to and we decided we like it like this. We want to give him a different uh, take of this. So we got these set and since everything's already set, our board zeroed and everything, all we have to do is go up to file, export, audio mix down, and we want to change this file name to version 2. Everything else is the same for right now, and we're good. So all we have to do is export, and that'll export our version 2. So now we have two different versions uh, uh, that our buddy can choose from, two different styles of a take, and uh, we've done this on our left mic. So all we have to do now is go back and do it on our right mic the same way.